So back in April, World Horse Welfare received a concern about a mare in a field. She was in a group of around about 15 other horses. When I first saw Moose in the field, I noticed that she was in a really poor body condition. And this can be for many reasons, but one of my first thoughts was, as this mare got worms. So when I made contact with the owner, I did ask him about this, and he did initially tell me that he had wormed the mare a couple of days before I'd found her. So with that in mind, I did say, you definitely need to keep an eye on her if that she shows any signs of scouring or anything like that, that she should be seen by a vet immediately. And with a job like that, obviously it's something that I want to keep an eye on as a field officer. So a couple of days later, I returned to the field to check the mare and was still really concerned about her condition. At this stage, I did make calls to the RSPCA uh, and was basically looking at trying to get a vet out to come and attend to this mare to see what the vet's opinion was. So the following day, the vet was able to, to check the mare over and give, give their professional opinion about the condition of the mare. As, as the mare was in such poor condition, the vet actually gave authorisation for that, for that horse to be removed. So at that point, the owner was actually called and did arrive at the field and a long conversation took place and the decision was made to sign that mare over to World Horse Welfare. So at that stage, we needed to make steps to get the mare over to one of our farms where she could get the right veterinary care and attention and uh, be, be sort of groomed around the clock to, to hopefully get her back to full health. When I first saw Moose in the field, uh, I noticed that there was a stallion running with the mares. And so looking at her, even though she was in really poor condition, I could see potentially that she could be also pregnant. So when, when I sent her into Hall Farm, I did sort of let the staff know that she had been running with a stallion and that there were other mares in the field with foals at foot. So the, the possibility was there. My job is to go out and investigate welfare and to go and find them out in the fields like this. but. I've said this many times before but the real hard work starts when they actually get to the farms and when the staff here have to provide the care around the clock to nurse them back to full health. That's where the true hard work comes into this. She came in to us in the beginning of May. She was very skinny, heavily pregnant. She had, well, she really bad molting. She had a large collection of fluid and blood under her stomach, which probably where she's not been moving a lot. So yeah, it just kind of collected under and caused another big lump under her stomach. She was quite dull and quite lethargic. So um, yeah, not overly very happy. When she came in, she got checked by our vet and because she was so malnourished and obviously heavily pregnant, we didn't want to overload her with feed because that could obviously cause other issues. So we slowly integrated feed. I think it was far, um, high fibre nuts, uh, high fi, um, and just trying to get her to have a bit more milk production because she didn't have any milk, especially with a foal being that close to being born. Very shortly, I think it's about a week after she came into us, she had goose. The day before she did have a vet check and our vet had said that probably another two weeks she would give birth. And the next day we come to find her in labour in the field. Um, so yeah, he was then born and it kind of took a bit of a twist. He seemed to be suckling all right, drinking, eating. Um, he seemed quite his normal self. And then he kind of went downhill rather quickly. He wasn't actually suckling properly. He wasn't getting enough milk from her because obviously being so underweight, she wasn't producing the milk. Um, he became quite lethargic, high temperature. Our vets came out multiple times and um, said that he would need a trip to Rossdale's. So, him and uh, his mum, they both went off to Rossdale's. Um, he had fluids, very high dose of antibiotics, and it was confirmed that he had pneumonia and sepsis. And that was just all from the fact that she wasn't producing a lot of milk. Um, even though it looked like he was suckling, he wasn't actually getting anything. But luckily, I think it was after about five days, five or six days, he picked up and he was able to come back to us. Um, well, they both were able to come back and yeah, they kind of kept picking up from then. We kept her on her, um, quite a high fibrous diet to put weight on and to give her more protein in her diet. Um, he started to pick up, she was producing more milk and then it got to the stage where they were able to go on to turnout. So we started kind of decreasing her feed but increasing her grass intake, which she was very happy about, they both were. 
Um, and yeah, he decided, you know, to start being a little boy. He was playing around a lot more. Um, and then we introduced them to Snowy and Can Can. Um, so he was able to have a friend to play with. They were put in a field all together as a four um, so that Can Can and Goose could kind of play about, be like little boys, have fun. Um, unfortunately, Snowy, Can Can's mum, had a lot of chronic feet issues. She had quite bad uh, laminitis. And with all the efforts of our team, the vets and Farrier, we tried everything we could to kind of cure that problem, make it better, make her more comfortable, but we just couldn't keep on top of it. And unfortunately, Snowy did have to be put to sleep. Um, but because they were all together, it made the transition from Snowy to Moose for Can Can a lot easier. Um, so then uh, Moose took on the role of adoptive mum for Can Can. I think it's been a difficult transition for Moose because she knows that Can Can is not her baby and because he was already about three months when it happened so he wasn't a new baby but she has done really well. She's not motherly in the fact that she will let him suckle but she does teach him manners, boundaries and she's on at him to kind of be a good boy. From a field officer point of view, to be able to come and see a horse that we've been able to help and get back to full health is one of the best things about my job. Honestly, the way it makes me feel is just, just incredible really. And you know, just me being able to be a little part of that is just, just fantastic really. This is Little Goose. Um, he is Moose's baby. And um, he, coming from how he started in life, um, from being going into the vet and the hospital, um, He's definitely turned into a very happy, playful little chap. Um, he takes to his mum, lovely. She gives him all the affection he needs, lets him suckle nicely, as well as telling him, giving him his boundaries and telling him off when he needs to. But yeah, he just loves being a little boy, out there playing, being mischievous and having a great time. So when she came into us, um, it kind of makes us feel, especially in that state, very angry, very frustrated um, that someone could let her get like this, especially being so heavily pregnant. Um, so she was a body score of below one. So there was nothing much to her apart from her baby. So with Moose, obviously her neck is still um, quite, not skinny, but still not where we'd want it to be. Um, obviously as you run along here, you can still feel her spine. Um, and you can still feel her ribs, but she is in a lot better condition. Obviously, if we go backwards, um, she's still got a bit of an undeveloped uh, rump as such, but um, with feed, hay, she will get back to full condition. So as you can see, we've got Moose Goose and Can Can here at Hall Farm, and they're all making a really good recovery here with us at World Horse Welfare. And we'd never be able to do the work that we do without the support of the public. So, you know, any help that you can provide for World Horse Welfare is always greatly appreciated for horses like this.